Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am Peter Jaworski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. And in this video tutorial, we're going to take our store locator one step further and add in some better UI for the user so that you actually know what's going on. So in order to do that, we need to create a module. So I've gone ahead and started up my own uh, module. If you're not familiar with this, uh, please check out the module development uh, video tutorials that I have on the site because I'm just going to kind of be diving right into this. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to call the function um, hook form alter. So implementation of hook form alter. So obviously we go function locator alter form alter. And this will take in the form, which is I believe by reference form state and form ID. And just looking at my notes, this is actually passed in by reference as well. Um, and we're going to DSM the form. Save this, reload the page. There's a, a pound ID that's uh, within the form array, and that's going to be a unique name. And uh, so we'll just look here. We're getting a bunch because we have, uh, you'll notice we got, we got four because we actually have uh, simple news here, we have devel enabled, and then we've got two. We've got our, our regular page listing, and then we've got an attachment listing coming from views. So that's why we're getting four. You'll notice here we've got views exposed form store locator page one. And then when we go to the other one, we've got views exposed form store locator attachment one. And we have to add in an if statement to make sure that we're hitting our specific form. So if form found ID is equal to if we hit that let's add in a validate function so pound validate and validates look for arrays so that's why we have that and we're going to call a function alter validate right so that's how you do that. If you want more information for uh, pound validate, just check out api.drupal.org. Uh, look in the forms reference and you'll see uh, why we're calling that. So now that we are calling our validate function only on that specific form, we go ahead locate. And all of these take in the form and they take in the form state. Right, so again, I'm going to use our handy DSM function here and take a look at what we're actually getting from the form. Hit save on that. So I go and I expand my array. And we want to see where the post is. So post. And this will actually uh, provide us with what was inputted into the form. So we see that we've got our postal code and we've got our search distance. So what we want to do is, for convenience sake, we want to add a variable, which we'll look at that, because it's a pretty long path. So we just do this, save ourselves some time. Right, and now I'm gonna paste in some code here, and I'll walk you through exactly what it does, rather than type it all out for you. So first thing, um, we've created this variable, pulls in the postal code. We're going to check to make sure that that postal code isn't blank. Because we don't want to be returning a message to a user saying you've entered a wrong postal code when they actually haven't entered anything. So we check it. If it's not blank, let's go ahead and check out uh, some other things to pass back to the messages. First thing we want to check, is the postal code too, too short? If it's less than six digits, we know that they've entered in uh, a postal code that's too short for a Canadian postal code, which is obviously six digits. Then we want to check if they've entered six digits, uh, check to see if they've entered a space. Uh, so if they haven't, you do not enter a space in your postal code, right? That's what string pose takes our, uh, our actual string, looks for a space. If it's false, we know that they didn't enter a space, so they get that error message. Lastly, if it's greater than seven, uh, we know that they've entered too many digits, so we're going to pass back a message that says you've entered too many digits. Go ahead and save this, test out our functionality before we move on. Hit reload. Going to hit apply. And we're not getting anything, which causes us some concern. 
And obviously a stupid mistake. We put in path, not post. Let's go ahead and save that. Hit apply. You now enter a space in your post code. Perfect. We have to add in a new function which will look at our view result and it will pass back a message if there are no uh, results being returned. So the, we, the way that we do this is we head over to api.lullabot and we search for views, oops, hook views. And views has a bunch of hooks that you can call uh, that will alter your view at various stages throughout the actual development process. So the one that we're going to use is actually uh, post render. Nope. Sorry, not. We're going to use view pre-render, and this is called right before the render process. And you'll see here at the end, all the data should be available. That's what we want because we want to look to see what result we're getting. As well, we want to be able to pull out the exposed filter. So let's go ahead, take a look at what the function signature is. So we're going to copy that. Head over to locator, alter. Take out our extra space. And you probably guessed it, DSM the view. Go ahead and save that. Let's take a look at what our view passes back to us. Now we're getting two because we're actually having two views queries called. We have a page and we have an attachment. So that's why we're getting two. But not to worry, we just want to use one. So the way that we do that is we're obviously going to use an if statement just like our form ID. Um, we're going to look to see what the name is. So you'll see here name is store locator. And just to be sure, we're going to go down to the other one. And when we take a look at it, you'll notice it's also store locator. So we'd obviously have a problem. We can't say if name is equal to store locator because it'll apply true both times. So what we do is you look at the current display, page one, as opposed to attachment one. So we know, obviously, we've got to change this, create an if statement to use those two. View name is equal to store locator and right so that takes care of our criteria for hitting the form but the other thing we want to do is we want to know we only want this to apply when the results are equal to zero so obviously we only want this to apply when that is equal to zero so we want count view result is equal to zero. Lastly, we want and we want this to apply when someone's actually entered in a postal code. If somebody came to this first page, uh, there'd be no results. Everything would hit true and there wouldn't be a postal code though, so they'd be getting this error saying there are no stores within your proximity, which is problematic because they haven't enter even entered the proximity. So what we have to do is not empty view exposed raw input that should not have our quotes around it distance code right and then so now what we're going to do is Drupal set message and we'll go back to this let's add in our message we don't have to do this but we could just pass it back into the function but this is a little bit cleaner right so we want to pass in our message I want to put in status oops put in true let's go ahead and save that pass it back to 10 and we should get a message that says no results. Sorry, there are no stores within a given proximity. Perfect. Let's check this again. 10,000. Beauty. Worked. No message. So there we go. We just prettied up our store locator. Vastly improved the UI of your site. Really helps your users. Makes it much more user friendly. They actually know what's going on and they're not left guessing. Always a benefit. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thanks very much.